Hey, everybody, just give me a minute to get organized here. Do, do, do. All right. Oh, thank you, Chad. I didn't realize I got the date wrong. All right, let's start doing roll call stuff. Um, Clemens, are you there? I am, I am. All right, Dan Barker. Here. All right, uh, Jim Curtis. Curtis. Jim, you there? Uh, not yet, he's working on it. Um, Varun, are you there? Yep. All right, cool. Um, Matt Rakowski. Here. All right. Uh, David Lyle. Yes, I'm here. Uh, da, 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 you're on. You're on, are you there? What about uh, Jim Curtis again? Uh, I'm here. Was I mute? All right, gotcha. And what about Jim Curtis? Okay, what about Thomas? I'm here. All right, Louis or Louis? Louis? Right. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm always saying it the wrong way. Yeah, I'm here. Thank you. I apologize for that. Really, uh, uh, Yom? Hey, I'm here. All right. Um, -bum -bum -bum. I think that's everybody so far. Cool. Oh, uh, Steve, are you there? I'm here. Excellent. I'll make the window a little bigger. Uh, Chad, are you there? Chad? Chad, you might be on mute. I'm going to have to circle back around to him. Um, Lee, are you there? This is Jim Curtis. Jim Curtis. OK, hey, hey Jim. Doug. Hey, Doug, it's Lee. Hey, Lee. OK, Jim, I got gotcha. you. Yep. <clears throat> hey, guys, I'm here. It's Chad. Oh, hey, Chad. Cool. Thank you. Uh, da -da -da. And Mr. Mark Peake. Mark Peake is on. Excellent. Thank you. William. William, you there yet? Okay, what about uh, Ben? Ben, are you there? What about David Lyle? Yes, I'm here. Excellent. Uh, but I'm on twice, though, now. <laughs> oh, did I get you twice? Yeah. Oh, sorry, Joy, sorry. <laughs> uh, good morning. Okay. This is Ben. I am here. Uh, okay. I need to leave imminently. That's so fine. I'm here to uh, give my regrets. Uh, well, that's okay. I'll, I'll, you, I heard you once. That's all that's necessary. <laughs> uh, Stanley, are you there? Hey, Doug. Hello. Uh, Sven. Yes. Thank you. Do, 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 let's see. Klaus, are you there? Yes. Excellent. Rachel, are you there? Yeah, I'm here with Sarah also. Hi, okay. this is Sarah. Hey, Sarah. Uh, John Mitchell. Good morning. Uh, hello. Austin, are you there? Just joined. Hi, Doug. Excellent. Hello. I know I missed somebody in this list. William, are you there yet? William? That's unusual. Usually he's there. Okay, John Mitchell, I got you. All right. Um, <clears throat> is there anybody on the call who I did not mark with an asterisk yet? I think I got everybody except William. After you, you did roll call. I'm sorry, I couldn't hear you, Sarah. Say that again. This is, um, so yeah, I added Rachel and Sarah, um, but you don't, after you went through the asterisks. 
Oh, my, uh, never mind. Okay, yeah, I got you, don't worry. <laughs> uh, Kathy, are you there? Yeah, I'm here. All right, cool, thank you. Uh, what about Eric Erickson? Eric, are you there? Uh, yes, can you hear me? Yes. <laughs> okay. Gotcha. Okay. All right. We're going to get started in just a second. So, Mark Fisher. Are you there? Mark? I'm here. Yes, thank you. Excellent. Uh, last chance, William. Okay, what about Sean? I'm going to say it wrong. Feldman? Here. Excellent. Thank you. <laughs> I think I said Fieldman last time. Um, okay, tell you what, I think that's everybody. We'll circle back around later. So let's go ahead and jump to the agenda. Um, oh, 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 hey, Doug, do you oh, mind yeah. if I do a, a, a couple quick introductions for some, for some newcomers? Um, sure. First off, super excited to have Eric Erickson uh, from Nordstrom join the call. I, I've been going out and trying to seek um, some new perspectives to join this working group. Um, people who aren't focused on uh, providing infrastructure as a service specifically. Um, so I've invited uh, Eric, um, who is uh, very popular in the serverless community in general, um, and looking forward to his perspective, as well as, uh, I think, um, is there anyone from Accenture here on the call? Oh, I think Sven's on the call. Um, Sven Loberg? Yes. Yeah. I see him on the list here. Um, there we go. Sorry. Yeah, now I'm off mute. <laughs> yeah, yeah, awesome. Yep. Yes. Uh, so Sven does a lot of uh, serverless things and open source things over Accenture. Um, and again, I think that they have a, a, a useful perspective that they could lend um, and excited to just, you know, have, have these new perspectives uh, join the effort. That's great. Thank you. And welcome guys. Thanks. Glad you could join. Thank you, Austin. Thank you everyone. All right. Um, all right, so let's jump right into the agenda. So a couple, we still have some outstanding action items for people to do is please, when you get a chance, take a look at yours. Uh, don't want to spend too much time there. Just another reminder for KubeCon face-to-face -face, uh, with your doodle poll. I, it's not that important anymore. Just we want to make sure we're just going to have quorum. And I think we have 15 people right now signed up. So we definitely will have quorum there. So we are going to have a meeting and it will be an official meeting. Um, and as I said last time, I will set up a doc for us for people to add topics as we get closer to the event. I think it's a little premature to do that right now. So with that, let's jump into some PR work. So I added four to the list, which should be relatively straightforward. Let's see if we can get these out of the way. I believe, Rachel, this one, first one might be yours. Do you want to talk to it? Um, I went to collect all of the things that are not the spec into a separate directory, and I thought we could add more here as we go. Very controversial, I'm sure. <laughs> Any questions about this one? Any objections to moving these two documents? All right, excellent. Thank you, Sarah. Easy enough. So hold on. Rachel, Rachel. I'm sorry, Rachel, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> sorry. Uh, okay, next one is mine. Um, this one, um, since we approved, I can't remember which PR it was last week, but basically we revamped the scope and stuff. There was a suggestion to go ahead and remove the status section since it seemed to be, to be duplicate or old. So I did that PR. So basically all I did is remove the status section since we now have the scope stuff. Is there any questions on that? Oh, well, I just want to say for context for people who are new that now the readme contains like the next steps um, and then the high level goals, uh, design goals are in the spec. So it's, this is really the second part of that. Yep, exactly. Thank you, Sarah. Any questions on that? Any objections to approving it? All right, cool, thank you. Um, Louie, I think this one's yours. You wanna to talk to it uh, out of tracing, out of event tracing? Let me hide the comments here for a sec. Actually. Yeah, so th this essentially is adding a section into the, uh, I guess the, the use case document uh, on event tracing, essentially just to indicate that we need some mechanism of being able to um, have a, cover the case where we have a sequence of uh, events that are result from an initial event and have some mechanism of being able to trace those events uh, through um, multiple um, intermediate devices. Okay, any questions on that? 
All right, now there was one I've seen a comment asking you to put a blank line in there. Um, if that's non, obviously material change, so we can obviously do that uh, before I actually merge it. If you don't get a chance to do that, I can do that for you later today. I think I have admin access to make that change. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, any objection then to accepting this? All right, easy enough, done, thank you. Um, Austin, minor adjustments to the roadmap. Would you like to talk to this one? Sure, this is a pretty minor PR. Um, Sarah did a great job of refining our roadmap uh, to be oriented around versions instead of uh, dates. And uh, when she made that change, there was uh, a couple agenda items that weren't under specific versions. Um, they were in a section called additional items. Uh, and I felt it was important to put some of those uh, uh, items, those agenda items or action items in specific versions because some of them are pertaining to the marketing of this effort. And I think, for example, you know, making sure that we have our marketing materials in place uh, as we reach 0 0.1 is important. So anyway, I simply moved those additional items into uh, versions where I thought they were most relevant. Okay, um, any questions on this? I think it's been out there for a while. I think last night you made some very minor editorial tweaks, nothing substantial. So it's been out there for a while for people to review. Any questions or comments on this? All right, any objections to accepting it? Excellent, cool. All right, in that case, we're done through what I consider to be the easy PRs. Uh, next. So Sarah, you had made a suggestion here to talk about the scope of the specification for the roadmap. Um, before, I, before I get you to, to talk to your suggestion here, I do want to just point out that um, I think it was actually last week's call, we agreed to this text in the spec already, which to me pretty well defines the spec, uh, the, the scope of the spec itself. So go ahead and, and make your point though. Um, I think when we agreed upon the high-level design goals, we felt that there wasn't really enough specificity to, for example, answer the what is source question. And what I've seen happen in the discussion of attributes is that there are multiple attributes that combine together to achieve one of the goals. And so if we don't refine those goals a bit more then, and, and deal with things one attribute at a time, you know, like we haven't really scoped the spec. And so I feel like the work that Clemens did on the um, usage scenario section would address that concern. Um, and I think actually the, the, the description of the producer goes a long way towards answering a bunch of the confusions about what is source. And um, I'd like to just propose that we finish that before deciding on any of the attributes. So we can have discussions about them and move the discussions forward where people feel that they are aligned However, I would like to not address any PR for any attribute until that usage scenario is, um, PR is committed. So I, I personally don't feel like that the usage scenario discussion is even doing anything to the scope of the specification. The scope of the specification is about us having common metadata and data attributes that help us to facilitate interoperability and that's the scope of it. And I don't think we, we, uh, we expand the scope and I'm actually not willing to go and take a step back to you know, the beginning and talk about the scope of the spec again. Okay. But, but, uh, but we're, we're, I, I would rather go and start making progress because ultimately there's a bunch of people around here who are interested in writing code. And we're, I think we're, we're very close to writing code. And I think there's a um, growing consensus in the group that we are fairly close. So I would like to get to the point of um, uh, us, you know, going through the user scenarios, which we talked about already this week for two hours, and and look at them again. Um, I think there was plenty of opportunity to go and give feedback on this, and then get to uh, defining to go back to the real work, and then is talk about the properties. I just want to say that I think we were very close to being able to write code based on the spec in November before it was ever brought to the CNCF. And I very much want to write code based on a specification. And so I just want to address that point. But I think Rachel I, had a suggestion. Yeah, this is Rachel. I, um, 
I think that this, so the, the idea that we would be taking a step back to if we become aligned on what it means to be interoperable seems like a mistake to me. Like the point of being interoperable is that we agree on, like this is the point that we agree. And so we have to, we have to start agreeing on things before we start writing code. So, so then let me ask the question back. What, what are we not agreeing on? I feel like, so in, in talking, so the, the, one of the reasons that we started talking, that we asked people to start making presentations about what they saw as like how they understood events to work is because in the conversation, people were using the same words in subtly different ways, which revealed to me, to others, that we were not, that we didn't have the same picture in mind, right? I think that, I think that the usage scenarios do a great job of making sure that we are aligned. It spells out exactly what we're trying to achieve. But like rushing, like rushing to that before we're before everyone like agrees on this feels like a mistake. So, so I would say two things. One, we spent two hours on the usage scenarios, and they ended up being uh, largely agreed to. Like I, I went through all the the, um, the feedback items, including the last ones that were filed today. Um, so yeah, I'm saying that's a good thing. So I'm not yeah, that's, that's great. That's great. Beyond that. I don't think we should go and reopen any any further discussions and get to work. So I don't, I, I, don't, I, don't understand, I don't understand what the holdup is. If we say that the use of scenarios discussion is the one that, that brought us there, what is that further objection that you're raising here, Sarah? So Clemson, I, I think there is a, no consensus if we're essentially defining an envelope to an event and the event details are still in the event, or we're trying to create an abstraction with a lot of the metadata. So I'd like to make a suggestion here, because I, th I think I've heard several different things. One is uh, someone was suggesting that we, we, we don't really uh, work too hard or work too fast on the attributes until we agree on things like the use of scenarios. And I will point out that use of scenarios is the very next thing we're gonna be talking about. So we are gonna be trying to get agreement on that. The other point I wanna make though is Going forward, basically everything is done through PRs. Whether you want to change the process, or you want to change the governance, you want to change the spec, everything is done through PRs. And this phone call every week, given the limited time we have, we can't spend time on this call necessarily doing a whole bunch of abstract discussions or talking about alignment and stuff. Most of those discussions, just for the nature of time, have to be done offline. So if there are people who feel that we are not aligned on a particular topic, I would strongly recommend that we set up additional phone calls outside of this Thursday one to have those discussions and have the results of those discussions be PRs back to the working group for changes in some document someplace. Because as I run this call, I'm going to give priority to pull requests because that is ultimately what drives us our work forward. So Doug, mm -hmm. we, just accepted, um, we just accepted a small modification to the roadmap. The roadmap was agreed upon several weeks ago. It has two bullet points. Mm -hmm. One is the design goals, which we agreed upon last week. The other is the scope of the specification. We're talking about that bullet point, which was addressed in a PR some time ago. And so it's, I believe that we don't have alignment on the scope of the specification. I, and that, that's fine. I would then recommend that, that you offer to host a phone call outside of this one to come up with a pull request to further clarify the scope as you see fit. And I thought that that's what we were doing with the usage scenarios. In my understanding, that section of the spec met this bullet point of the scope of the specification. Okay, so th with that, oh, then, then let's, wait, 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 then let's jump into 117 right now and start discussing it and see if we can get agreement. Is that okay? Well, I'd like to hear, the, does everybody else, do other people feel that there will be additional things besides those usage scenarios necessary for that roadmap bullet point? Yeah, I think, I think, you know, in terms of the metadata attribute, I think we're not quite uh, in sync or done yet. I think there are still some scenarios that might need, you know, more metadata attributes there. And that, yes, and we can discuss those and people can offer PRs to add or remove attributes as we go along. That's okay. just the nature of the work. Yes. So yeah, so maybe we will, to, if we discuss these scenarios first, then we can ask that question. But I just ask that, after we have the usage scenarios discussion, it, you know, like before we move on to attributes that we all just agree that yes, we have to find the scope, whatever that is. Well, let's, let's have the usage discussion. Let's have the usage scenario discussion and see where we land then. Great. Okay. So, 
on the usage scenarios discussion on this particular uh, um, PR, um, I, I want to time box this to 10 minutes because I already spent, uh, we already spent um, at least two hours, if not two and a half hours um, on this this week uh, in a group. And uh, on this section, I would like to hear the folks who have not been present in that in those in those uh, talks to speak up and see what their their opinion on this is. Um, so what I'm doing here is eff effectively I'm, I'm um, in this PR I'm uh, uh, grouping usage scenarios in four groups. Um, first is um, I'm talking about so first of all I'm I'm defining in the in the first paragraph saying. Um, this is what, what this is about, and it's user scenarios from developer perspectives. The second is I'm making clear that I'm keeping the roles of event producer and event consumer distinct. Um, that is to mean uh, we're talking about a one-way flow, but one application can always take on multiple roles concurrently, which including be, being both a pursuit, producer and consumer of events, which means if the application wants to go and take this what we're defining here and model a bidirectional flow on top of it, and that's fine. It's just not the focus of, uh, of what we're doing. So first, applications produce events for consumption, um, and you can go and read this yourself. I just want to go and highlight what needs, needs highlighting. Um, what's um, um, important is uh, that events are typically produced related to a context, so they come from somewhere, um, or they are uh, produced based on a producer chosen classification. I'll have some examples um, in the PR, in the following PR um, discussion. Um, so um, I can um, with pictures. But for a, for a, uh, example, a temperature sensor or a room here um, may be context qualified by the mount position, which means where is it mounted in a room by room by a room by a floor by a building. Um, that's something that's fairly concrete, and that's what I call context, or um, it's purely abstract, like a sports result, and that's classified by league um, and teams. I'm also making clear that the producer, and that also applies to the consumer later, could run anywhere. Um, it's a server or a device. Um, and um, then I'm also making clear here, because we have some IoT folks, that the, produced event, that the, the origin of the event, effectively the original producer, matters and not necessarily... Um, the one who, who then ultimately renders the message as a cloud events uh, message. So if we decide that our um, an old transport binding has a particular shape and that events need to be rendered in a particular way, um, that doesn't automatically mean that that's the producer of the device. It could quite well be that you have a device that sits somewhere on LoRa 1 where it only has you know, payloads of 12 bytes available and that there's a gateway that then acts on its behalf, but that gateway doesn't play any um, deeper role in that relationship, except that it just renders devices. Um, and so I gave an example for that for weather station, for instance, um, and the uh, weather station is the producer, and then there's an intermediary, which is effectively the, the, the wireless base station, and that goes and does the rendering, but it really plays a middleware role, but it doesn't play a middleware role where it's um, something that we do need to consider in, in a deeper way. Then applications consume events, it's the next section, for all kinds of purposes. I make, a, I make an enumeration here, um, mostly just to catch most of the cases that people may be thinking about. And obviously also have the, um, um, some, uh, make it as broad as possible. It's not meant to be an exhaustive list. Um, and uh, again, the consumer may be anywhere. So we're not being specific about the consumers being serverless applications. It could also be clients um, and, um, I'm, and here I'm starting to enumerate a few things that the consuming application is interested in and that drives requirements towards the producer. So for instance, they want to be able to distinguish events that the exact same event is not processed twice. Um, they want to be able to figure out, looking at an event where that event, what context that um, uh, event is related to or uh, how that event has been classified by the producer. Um, they want to identify the temporal order of the events relative to the originating context. Um, if the device that, if there's a device that originates the events and it doesn't have a, um, um, a real time clock, um, then at least we need to give it a way to go and say, uh, give some sequencing to the, to the messages. Um, not all temporal order is based on UTC wall clock. 
Um, but UTC wall clock is obviously an order and criterion that also works. Um, and then we want to um, understand the context related detail information carried in the event, which means there's data that we want to understand. And to understand the data, we need to know what shape it is. And then we will probably want to be able to correlate multi event instances from multiple events for producers and send them um, to the same consumer context. So there's got to be some way of how we can go and identify stuff that belongs together. Um, and um, then there is um, further, furthermore, we're covering the, with, the, with the next points, we cover the cases where the event doesn't, doesn't carry complete information because it's not possible to do so for legal reasons um, or for security reasons. So you have an HR application that raises, raises an event about a new um, employee record having been created. Um, that's something that an application may be able to go and catch, but to actually get at the PII of that um, employee, they will have to go back to the PR, to that HR application and then pull out all the details. So an event may not be completely self-contained, but may contain inside of its payload um, pointers back to the original source, where then all the, the details that are really necessary for processing that event um, are hosted. Um, and then they may also uh, contain information, it's the second bullet here, interact with the event subject at the originating context. So you get alarmed, for instance, or you get alerted about a new blob file having been created. And um, then uh, you want to be able, and you know that that's a JPEG file and you want to go and create new thumbnails based on that JPEG. You obviously have to go back to the subject of that event, the blob that has been created and then load it and create your thumbnails. So that's something that also consumers might be interested in. Further down, um, what we also call out here in the, in the uh, just go a little bit, yep. So that the consumer interest motivates, that's a, a thought piece effectively. Um, the consumer ultimately motivates what the producer needs to put into the event because the consumers are interested in information. The producer withholds information based on some, some considerations, as we just said, with the HR application. Um, but otherwise, uh, it's effectively always the consumers that drive what needs to be in an event or not and how that also needs to be structured. Then we get to a section on, so questions so far. Yeah, quick question. Um, so would there be a way for uh, consumers to be able to, or at least producers to be able to indicate that a group of events are, are related or associated together? Um, that's, so there's a requirement here that the consumer makes um, and we captured that, that you can correlate event instances from multiple event producers to send them to the same consumer context. Um, that's also, that implies that the same event producer obviously also needs to be able to go and provide a correlation criteria. Okay, thank you. Right? Okay, so middleware. Um, so we've, we have effectively now the both ends, the ones that are producing events, the other the ones are consuming events. Now we're talking about the ones that are sitting in the middle between them. Um, so I'm using middleware as the catch-all phrase for API gateways, ESBs, message brokers, event, event routers, um, event ingesters, effectively anything, um, for, even for the, the, um, the proc an HTTP proxy or for an HTTP load balancer or even the HTTP dispatch logic that sits in the web server. Everything, all of those pieces are middleware. Um, everything that is not the, the code that produces the, the event and the code that, that um, uh, pro processes the event is effectively middleware. So middleware routes events from producers to consumers or onwards to other middleware. So middleware's, middleware might chain, might cause chains. Um, you'll also see that later. Applications producing events might delegate certain tasks arising from their consumer's requirement to middleware. So it's ultimately the producer um, and the people who configure the producer. So it's not only the producer's code, but it's the, the producer deployment, including the configuration for that deployment. That's a, all of those things together taken. Um, there's a decision being made as you, as you take that code and configure it, where those events flow, and then also what middleware you take and configure with it to, and then which paths you delegate out. So in some, ca in some case, you may have a, um, a, a software that's a producer that just calls a webhook. And in some case, you may have a consumer that just you know, is, takes the webhook and then you put them together and the middleware is effectively just the HTTP stacks on both ends. 
um, but you may take the exact same pair of producers and consumers and may slot an event um, bus in the middle and they won't know but the event bus in the middle will take work work away for, away from them for instance doing distribution of events uh, creating copies um, and um, also creating resilience etc so, so some of that one, work, uh, one yeah. question regarding what you said before you talked about correlation is the correlation and all that responsibility of cloud events because i don't think the cloud events you know beyond seeing a uh, unique id or a class should not own uh you know cross correlation between uh, events I, i think i think cloud events can provide a good hint for that i don't necessarily think that we need to think about correlation in the sense that you would think about it in like ngp But yeah, no, so because I, I really want to try and keep what we're doing to the minimum and not try to uh, me, too. me too. And, and I, think, I think we can. So correlation is something correlation is something that we can very, very easily do um, using um, a clever interpretation of our of the, the discriminators that we need to go and define anyway. So um, I'll, I'll, I'll actually go and, and pr present a solution to that. So this is something that's a problem statement and I believe in that problem statement. Um, Kathy brought up a good point about it. So I believe in that in a problem statement and but I think there's no expansion of the scope that we have already to address it. Yeah, right. But that means that you need to add more metadata that well, will no, allow no, it doesn't. I don't think it does. I, I don't think we have to. It's just a question of it's just a question of how you use your middleware. So I'll, I'll address that later. So um, you have the You, you delegate to the middleware, typically, the management of many concurrent interested consumers for so one of multiple classes or originating, con originating con context of events, meaning you have a producer, the producer sends messages, and now um, there's 20,000 people in, uh, um, interested in it. That's a distribution task that's typically done by middleware. You don't make the producer do a for loop and send the same event 20,000 times. Um, typically also there's a way for if you publish lots of events and you're interested in a class of events you're not interested in all of the events from that class but you're interested in a subset of them so there's processing of filter conditions something that's very common in PubSub software that's also being done there um, sometimes the middleware will go and do transcoding you show up and you submit an event in a message pack And then you want to go, uh, sorry, in JSON, and you want to have it a little bit more compact, so you put it in your message pack. Or simpler, you put a text file in or some text event in, and you want to have it uh, zipped for a um, for a transfer that's also transcoding. Transcoding basically doesn't shape, change the shape. Um, it um, merely changes the, the, the way how the data is coded on the way. Then there's transformation, also very common in enterprise integration scenarios where Uh, the goal is to keep the semantic um, integrity intact of the event so that it's still the same event, but there's a remapping happening. So for instance, if I take a native, uh, a native event that's being emit emitted through um, Azure Event Grid today, and uh, if I want to map, if I map it into a cloud events event, that's a transformation and that will not change the semantics of the event per se. So Clemens? Um, Just, yes. a, just a time check. We are actually already at the 10 minutes mark, so you, right. might wanna, you, might wanna, you might wanna pull it up a little, talk a little bit at a higher right. level. I'll, I'll do that. Yeah. Um, so, so, ultimately, so ultimately, there's, there's again, there's scenarios, then there's um, um, uh, the, middle, the middleware then drives a further set of requirements, again, on, ultimately on the producer who needs to produce that event. We also went Effectively, this, these things are all following out of the, um, the, the, store, the, the, the scenarios up here. Um, and we talked through that in detail. And let me, get, let me get to the framework section. And then we have the fourth one, which is really about frameworks. And frameworks are not in the, so frameworks are not necessarily in the, um, um, They're, they're neither producing the events, nor do they consume the events, nor do they route the events, but they're actually helping the application developer do, to, to make things easier. Um, and um, frameworks, what frameworks do is they often do dispatching. So when you think about most popular, popular application frameworks, um, they take some kind of request and now make it, dispatch it with some user code. So if the user code is a function, then there needs to be enough information in that event for that dispatching to happen. And typically, 
you take an event stream, a fairly narrow event stream, and that event stream may have um, a few different operations that you're observing or um, kinds of events, I would say, that you're observing. And what you're doing with that framework is you're dis dispatching that onto um, a method. And then another thing that frameworks obviously do, and that's what they're interested in, um, and that's why we have a lot of your framework people on the call, is to make sure that um, um, platforms are semantically aligned so that things uh, look the same. So you can provide a platform abstraction that then ulti ultimately makes things like the IBM Cloud and Google Cloud and, the, and AWS and Azure kind of look the same for applications. Okay, so, so that is all that. So this is, this is all about the user stories. Again, we've spent like two, two and a half hours on this. Um, already and so um, wait before you tell wait I have questions um, yeah. and I asked some questions in the in the PR but listening to you recount it I like I'm not sure why like why are we talking about frameworks like are frameworks just like a subset of the consumer is there something I'm missing there uh, we're talking about frameworks because frameworks have specific requirements so frameworks frameworks are is stuff that is sits kind of in the that someone builds. Who's not the who's not the consumer of the ultimate event? Each individual instance of a framework will be a consumer, right? Yeah. So yeah, my point, my point is, I'm talking about user stories, and so I'm talking about people here. So there's someone who consumes the event who, who builds an app, and then there's Austin who writes frameworks, um, who sits between the thing that I built and the thing that the user builds, and Austin is a framework builder. Okay. So, but then the Framework builder is it doing things in the service of the consumer, I think is, is the Rachel's that, point. That was so the thing that you would know. have this sort of yeah, yeah, but yeah, but it's a user story. So therefore, there's two distinct users. There's someone who builds something who builds builds a consumer, and there's someone who builds something that needs to handle those events. Austin needs no Austin's tool tooling or Azure functions needs to go and take an inbound event and needs to call a function in some way. The, the so normal the person on the street doesn't do that work, but they simply write the functions. So Correct. there's a person here, there's a person here who writes that framework, and since that's neither middleware nor the consumer, they get a specific section. Okay, just to, to the point, we, there are multiple potential actors in source, and there are multiple potential actors in consumer, and um, I don't know if it was you or somebody else who argued earlier in um, that aggregating all of the producer concerns together, whether they're the platform provider or the application writer was appropriate. Do you agree that Austin has a job? <laughs> I'm just saying that if we aggregate things- Do you agree that Austin has a job that is not writing about business apps? So I'd like to hear from other folks. I, I'm I'm not sure I'm clear. You're saying, you know, I, I also don't think we need to have a lot of uh, sources because the source needs to be of the package. We're not talking about sources. We're not talking about sources. We're talking about this, what's currently pre present here. We're talking about that PR. Yeah, yes, let him ask his question. No, we're, we're, I want to make progress on this thing. So, I, and we're already past the time box. Okay, so, so guys, talk, hold, guys. Objections to this PR as it's so, 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 so hold on a sec. So, I think there may be a little misunderstanding here. So correct me if I'm wrong here, Clemens, but your, your PR is really just sort of laying the groundwork and explaining the various yeah. actors that may be involved in the bigger picture here. It's not necessarily defining our set of attributes or anything like that. It's just sort of laying the groundwork for someone to understand all the things that we thought about as we developed the specification. That's right. Okay. Just a so, question. Uh, I'm not for Confluent, uh, but there is this uh, Confluent uh, schema registry and where does it fit? Um, uh, which perspective does it, is it satisfied? Uh, is it a, in the framework section or consumers? Uh, I'm not sure. The schema that's registry is, to, is tooling, so that's framework. Okay. It so. makes the interaction with the event platform infrastructure simpler. Uh, I, I don't. Okay. Well, I mean, I think that we should take notes when, if uh, rather than just having verbal, um, you know, these kinds of notes. 
Okay. Um, so, and that, that, that whatever clarifications are necessary in this meeting should also go into the text. Let's, I, I'm, I, would, I would propose that we take the PR as it is because we spent two and a half hours on it. And, 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 then, and then people, and as just Doug proposed, um, we're doing all the further work on that using PRs because I'm not gonna keep, I'm not gonna keep holding the pen on this. Right, so, so okay, so moving forward in terms of process here, we have a PR in front of us. Now keep in mind a couple of things. First of all, nothing in this pull request is normative, okay? Exactly. It's all just explanatory text to help lay the groundwork for someone reading the spec to understand what was going into our thinking as we we're making decisions, okay? Nothing here is normative. Um, the other aspect is at this point in time, especially since it is such a large PR, we are not looking for so everybody to look at this and say, yes, it is perfect. People can make further changes later on with additional PRs. What we're looking for right now is whether this is a step forward in the right direction and whether it would make the spec better to add it as opposed to make it worse. Because if we wait until it's perfect, we're never gonna merge it. So remember, we're not looking for perfection. We're just looking for, is it a step forward in the right direction? And is there anything here that's really objectionable to going in? Because if we try to lower the bar or raise the bar at all, I think we're never going to get we're never going to complete. So, with that in mind, do people have comments they'd like to bring up? So, Doug, I have sort of mixed feelings. I think it's good to have a, a nice background. On the other hand, I'm sort of a little afraid that we're getting into too many details about the event itself, as if that's our focus. That's the group focus. I think the group focus is about transferring events between systems, not about the the actual nature of the event. That's my view. So I think on one end, it's good to have an overview, but if we're diving too deep into the explaining what event is, it's sort of hinting that we want to, you know, be event aware. Are you objecting to the text? <sighs> That's what I say. I have mixed feelings. I, I'm okay with it as long as we understand that we're not trying to uh, build event, you know, sort of dive into the events themselves. I think the text is what it is. And I don't expect it to change or expand. Yeah, I think I think he tried to say it pretty abstract as, as much as he could anyway. Any other questions, comments? Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna chime in on this real quick. Um, I've read through everything and I participated in in some of those calls, uh, and I appreciate the leadership uh, by Sarah and by Clemens uh, to provide clarity around all this and this common understanding. Doing that amongst uh, big industry stakeholders is. is it was never, it's never going to be easy. And I think we've, we've come a long way. Um, I think that this looks pretty good and provides a lot of necessary clarity, not for the perfect end result, but for moving forward and just getting to the first version of the specification. Definitely hearing a lot of um, anxiousness to, to try and move forward and focus on how we can, on focus on getting that initial version out and keeping it minimal and finding alignment on these, these core attributes that seem to be, um, seem to be difficult to align on. And I think there's enough in here to help us um, to establish a lot of alignment and uh, move on to discussing those core attributes. Okay, thank you, Austin. Any other comments? Have all of the, um, pro have all the comments that are in the PR been addressed or responded to? So those were, um, so this, is, this is kind of, my point, I read a note in the docs. Um, the Clement responded to things with comments, which means that if this PR is accepted, all of that information and clarification will be lost. And so I think that um, there are some really key points that some might argue are wordsmithing, but since they generated a bunch of confusion in the comments, I would argue are not wordsmithing. Maybe wordsmithing can resolve them, However, there is, exists a lot of confusion. And um, I might point out that like early on, we, we've a number of times come back to um, this uh, presentation that Clemens made early on about events being fact and messaging having intent and messaging knowing the destination. And in you know, uh, uh, one of the upcoming PRs, somebody says, why aren't we calling this cloud messages rather than cloud events? which I think gets to the core problem that we don't yet have enough to explain and that comes up almost weekly. And so um, I'm happy to hold the pen for uh, a day or two if Clemens, you're, you don't want to do that wordsmithing, but I believe that it is necessary. So, so the PR is not lost. 
because if we merge it, then it's still in the record. And which means you can also you can refer to points. Which means if you're making if you're making an amendment, um, which means you make another PR, um, you can obviously go and link to the the, the prior PRs. But it does mean that people who go to look at this doc won't see it. Yeah. So the key thing is, I believe that this PR, as written, if accepted right this minute, would move us backwards, not forwards. Okay. So then, how about we how about we go and abandon that entire thing? Okay, I don't, okay, well, I don't want to abandon the entire think, thing. I want to add to so, it. It's not an so all situation. So guys, guys, hold on a sec. Let, let, let's get let's get very precise here. So Sarah, which comments in the PR do you think are blocking comments? So we can try to look at them. So I would like that every time Clemens has responded with a clarification, that that clarification be in the text rather no, than no, no, because I don't have to agree with your I don't have to agree with your objections and cause text changes because of it. That's not how that works. Okay, so I read your I, I, I can I can I can disagree with you. This is my text, right? I write it. I hold the pen. I propose this PR is done. I will make no further changes. We will go and, and vote on it. And then you and then you can go and, and make a mess. But there I don't see any any reason for there to be for to block this at this point. Do you not I want address, people? I have to I have addressed the objections. And so there's, and, and you, can, you can open a PR in 10 minutes to go and address it. We have no locked version of the spec. We're in the process, but we don't need to, we, we, if, we, if we just keep PRs open, 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 open on change the spec, we don't make any progress. So if you believe that this, that this PR holds the spec back or throws it back as is, then we should not take it and abandon it and not have a user section. It's not wait, wait, so I have a question, Clemens. I believe that everything, every comment that I made was not an objection, but actually a clarification. If you think anything I said was an objection, I'd really like to hear it. Because that I, I, have, it I, have, I, have, I have addressed, I have addressed all points. I have not formulated them necessarily in the way that you did. So, 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 okay. Right. Clement, hold on a sec. We're, we're going to run out of time here. So, again, Sarah, let's go back. Okay, I'm not. I agree with you that there are questions that maybe the, the original asker of the question would have liked to see some text changes and sometimes Clemens made those changes, sometimes he didn't, that's fine. However, my, my very specific question is, is there any comment in here that you see that you feel like needs to be made before the PR is actually merged and cannot be made in a subsequent PR? It's not so, wait, wait, so um, we had two hours of conversations about, and we, we talked in detail about one and two, and I know people felt like there was too much wordsmithing on those calls. And those changes that were agreed upon on those calls have not been integrated into this PR. So I don't, I don't know that that was really- true. That is not the truth. I, wait, I, waited on one, I waited on Monday, didn't do anything, so that I don't throw things off. Then the call closed on Tuesday, and I went through and did all the changes and you can go and look at the log. That is just not, it's just not the truth. I went through and addressed all those things and it actually addressed all those, um, all those things um, in the call. And you see a day ago, a day ago, a day ago, I mean, it goes strolls through it. So that's, that is just not true. So again, um, I, don't, I don't know what the holdup is here. So let, let's see if we could focus on those, uh, on the specific concerns uh, by Sarah. Yeah. Sarah, which, which comments do you feel are blocking that could not be easily addressed ah. with a follow-up here? Um, Should we go through and like talk through each of them? So, um, so, like spent, so Clemens spent 10 minutes presenting the four points in this PR. And we've had very little discussion of it. I haven't had the opportunity to go through and like I can spend that time right now. You had, you had, you had, two, hour, you had two hours. In talk, in in calls, you had you had you had four days, right? Since we have uh, to go through those to go through those things, I don't I don't know what the holdup here is. What I want to do is I want to get to working on the document and not working on this usage section. And and we're gonna I'm serious, right? I don't think this is non-normative text. Nobody is gonna build software based on this. This is purely existing. Because of your insistence, Sarah, that we need to have these user scenarios to drive some consensus, 
even though I believe that there's industry consensus, actually about most of the concepts that we're, that we're trying, to, to, trying to use. Okay, okay so, 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 that, so, sorry, so that, is what, so, so that is what the section is for. I wrote it, right, to, to, create, to, to provide clarification. I think for most people on this call, this, the, content, the content here is not, you know, not really necessary, right? And I'm happy if that section is actually not in the spec. So, so okay, Clemens, wait, wait, Sarah, can you, can, you, can you point us to which specific comment you feel like is a blocking comment that needs to be addressed before we can, like, in well, essence, vote on the PR? And uh, Dan, if, if, I think, wait, so, Dan, do you want to talk or do you come off mute on a stage? No, sorry, I'm accidentally off mute. Okay, can you mute yourself again? Because it's a lot of background noise. Thank you. Okay, go ahead, Sarah. I'd be interested in hearing why we're not doing cloud messages rather than cloud events and how this addresses that. So question. Sarah, no, I, I, I apologize. I have, to, I have to sort of object to, object to the question. We're trying to resolve this PR and you said that there were comments in here that you felt were blocking comments. Can you, can you point out which blocking comments there are so we can look at them? So um, my comments were apparently addressed yesterday and I have not had a chance to read. They're not just my comments. Other people made comments, which I thought revealed some confusion. And so I can go through that now, but I need a few minutes. So I, I did not I, I've, got a, I've got a suggestion. Uh, maybe, we, that this maybe, was. maybe we give Sarah some time um, and her team to you know, find those specific comments and we could discuss them in another separate call uh, this week. And you know, hopefully, hopefully resolve them. Um, but also in the interest of, of moving forward, I, perhaps we should consider doing a, a vote on this uh, next week. That's yeah, I think I agree with that. I think, you know, we can, we should give, you know, Sarah some time, you know, to go through this because she already said, you know, she does not have time to go through it after, you know, okay. the main address. Right. I'm, 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 so I'm not, I'm not going to be here next week, just to be clear. Um, and, um, and which means I can't, I will not be able to make any changes. Um, if people get time, that's fine, but I'm, I'm, I'm not gonna make any changes because I'm simply not here. Um, and I'm completely out of reach starting, starting Saturday. Um, okay, so in the, interest of, in, in the interest of progress, right? The way forward with this text as it is, is to take it and then modify it. And then right, you can so modifications because if there is no substantial objections to the entirety of the text, which there doesn't seem to be, then there doesn't seem to be any holdup to go and take the entire text and then start wordsmithing all the pieces of it in my absence, right? Right. So I don't understand, I don't understand what the holdup is. We can take this in and as said, it's non-normative and I personally don't even care about the section, um, but since, since we need to have some use of section apparently, I would propose that we take this now and then people start filing their PRs on that because I will not be here next week to address any change, any change requests on this. I will not be able to hold the pen, which means either we take this now, right? Or we're gonna take this in whatever, in two weeks, but then we won't have to be able to, to have that continue that discussion. Okay, so hold on a second. Before we run out of time, I'm gonna do a couple of things that are based upon what I heard. First of all, Clemens, since you're not here next week, um, it sounds like you're okay with someone else taking the pen and other people are allowed to make commits to this PR. You may have to be an admin, I'm not sure. So it may have to be me or Mark or somebody or else. Or collaborator. Right, so we, we, we can make edits going forward without you being here. Are you comfortable with people taking the pen in your absence? Yes, if we, if we merge, if, if the, the way how, the, how this works is, because this is my repo, is you take the PR and then you, you start well, doing no, okay, so, okay. So let, me, let, me, let, me, let me switch the order which I, I discussed this then. So based upon what I'm hearing, I don't think it would be appropriate to merge the PR today because people have asked for more time to review because there were some changes made too soon to this meeting. So I'm not comfortable forcing the merge right now because Wait, we- there have the, been no changes. I have not made any changes. For, since changes. yesterday? No. Since yesterday, right? No, I have not. I have, I, have made, I have made a comment today because there was a comment today, but I have not changed. I have not made any changes yesterday. Okay, in that case, the, from a time perspective, you're right. Taking, for, for the governance rules, that is, that is plenty of time. Um, 
So if, if we do not, in essence, vote today on it, though, if, if in your absence, would you be comfortable with someone making changes to your PR in, in your absence? I'm not sure that's technically possible to do you that. You can add them as a collaborator on your repo, or they I, can fork your repo. I can, I, I can do that. I've done it with other people's PRs, help them get past the signing issue, so it's not an issue. I just want to make sure you're comfortable with someone taking the pen, if necessary. Hey, Doug, I think the flip side of that is we can always fork from his repo and submit a pull request against this specific branch, right? Yeah, like, I mean, and Clements can ultimately choose to merge or reject the pull request, which makes changes, proposed changes I, to his pull. So summary is I don't care. Okay. Right? Okay. So do do what do whatever is necessary to make progress. Okay. So it's just, I, I, find, I find I find the fact that we spend this hour on this again, so that we're now we're now what three and a half hours this week in on a discussion that is not a normative part of the specification that doesn't bring this group forward at all. It's alignment. We're we're about we're trying to become aligned. So that yeah, we're trying to get aligned. What the alignment is is where the rubber hits the road, and that is on on concrete items that we can go and think about in terms of code. And okay, what so we're doing right now, we're trying to drive alignment. We're trying to drive alignment. On, on, on alignment. Okay, hold on a second, Dan. Clemens, I, I don't think we're going to get. Yeah, I don't think we're going to get alignment, Clemens. So let's just move on. Yeah, so, okay, so I, given everything that I've heard here so far, and Dan, on that. Okay, I think Dan's let me know. Okay, so given everything I've heard, I personally am not comfortable forcing a vote at this exact moment in time. I may be wrong, but forgive me, but I don't think, I don't feel comfortable doing that. I'd rather play more conservatively than, than rush it through. So, with that in mind, it sounds like we can, we can make edits to this, uh, to this text one way or another, either directly to his PR or fork it or whatever, that's not a problem. Um, Sarah, you said you needed more time and potentially going to want to discuss some edits. Can you set up an additional phone call for tomorrow to continue to continue the discussion for anybody that wants to have the discussion? Um, for tomorrow, uh, let me look. I can set it up. So, um, so yeah, it, it's a, it, I don't have the time that's the early morning time that um, some people on other that is time zone friendly. Okay, well, do me a favor. Sit, find some time. If it's not if it's not tomorrow, please don't make it any later than Monday. But send out a time, pick a time, and people will join. If you want to collaborate on wordsmithing or cha making changes to this text, please join that call, because next Thursday we will vote on some version of this text. Okay, right. does that sound fair to people? Yeah, that sounds, that sounds fine. fine. Yep. Okay. Okay. <laughs> This stuff's always fun. Okay, before we move on, which is only time to really do the roll call, is there anything else people want to bring up as a topic? Because to be honest, I don't think we have time for anything else. Okay, just to go back to the roll call then. William, are you there? Yep. Michael Payne. Yes, I'm here. Ryan, are you there? Ryan? Okay, what about Baram? Baram, are you there? You hear me? Yeah, I hear you now. Faintly, but I hear you. Joe, Hi. what about jo Joe Sherman? Yes, I'm here. What about Alex? Yep, I'm here. David Baldwin? Yep. It's okay, here. and Ryan, are you there? Okay, is there anybody on the call who I did not add to the attendance? Okay, with that in mind. Hello, hello. I Oh yeah, who's Hi, that? this is Ryan. Uh, this oh. is my first time. I I had problem unmute myself. Yes, I'm here. Not a problem. Thank you very much. If this is your first time, do me a favor. Go to the agenda doc and add your last name and your company you're from, so we can mark that in the attendance tracker. Agenda doc. Uh, where is the? Is this the agenda doc? Yeah, there's an see agenda the doc. Chat. Yeah, see the chat. I just pasted it in there. Oh, okay. Thanks. Okay. Um, as in, don't have any talks to bring up. I do, do want to address one comment in here on the agenda um, that Sarah brought up, which is uh, volunteers to present. Sarah suggested that we have volunteers present a small set of attributes that work together. Um, I would strongly recommend that if you would like to have us work on a group of attributes at one time because they are correlated or they're related, I would strongly suggest that you submit a pull request with your desired changes. This goes for anybody. I'm not talking to Sarah in particular, just in general. The best way to get a discussion going is around concrete text proposed for the specification. I'm going to give 
PR's preferential treatment over discussion talk. Okay, so if you want to push for something to happen, whether it's for a single attribute or a group of attributes, submit a pull request, and that's the best way to get the discussion going, because that is what I'm going to give priority to. Concrete changes get priority over abstract ones. Okay. So with that, we have three minutes left. Are there any other topics people would like to bring up? I have a quick question for Dan. We have a Dan Barker. He's on the line. I thought I saw Dan earlier. He's. So our cloud events website is not up. I um, was hoping that he could provision the website that he worked on to GitHub pages. And once that's done, we could, we could get the Linux foundation to point the domains to that, to that new website, but just need to understand the status of that first. Yeah. You may need to send him a note or pick him through Slack. I don't see him online anymore, unfortunately. Okay. Hey Doug. Yes, sir. Did you record uh, Dan versus Novo? I believe so. Let me just double check. I thought I got him. Yeah. yeah I think he did. Okay. Good. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't call his name out because he spoke. That's why I didn't have to do that. Yes. All right. All right. Any other topics? All right. With that, with, oh, Austin, were you going to say something? Uh, we'll get through this. <laughs> we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll make this happen. If, uh, if, we'll if we'll it get aligned. And I look forward to working with people, you know, in the individual calls, whatever it takes. I think what we're doing here is of great importance you know, events been an ambiguous subject for so long, getting all these great minds together to, to align on something is, is was always going to be hard. Um, but I think we we're making a lot of progress. And I, again, I, I think what we're doing right now is important to serverless in general, but it's bigger than serverless. I think this, this is going to have a big rising tide effect. Um, yeah. yeah, I'm, I'm yeah. still super excited. We'll pull through here. Yep. If, it, if this was easy, anybody would do it and we wouldn't get the big bucks, right? So every now and then you got to have something to keep you, you know, occupied and keep these things exciting. So it's okay. I agree with you. We'll get through it. If there are big, right. bucks big bucks going around, please send them my way. I, haven't <laughs> any. I, I apologize for the implication. <laughs> <laughs> All right. With that, I think we're done. Thank you guys very much. We'll talk next week. And Sarah, please send out an invite for, uh, for, the, for the next meeting. It will be, it's already, uh, it's above, it's in the action items. It's going to be 8 a.m. tomorrow and we'll send out an invite. Okay, excellent. Cool. Thank you very much. Thanks, right. everyone. Thanks, Thank guys. you. Bye. Bye. Thanks, Brad. Bye.